Welcome to the first episode of Snacks and Facts, Snack Size History, and this thing that I'm gonna eat. is a Yorkshire pudding and it's from Yorkshire. That's right, because it's Yorkshire day today and that's important for a couple of reasons that I'll get to later. Yorkshire pudding isn't really a snack though, is it? I'm just gonna eat it with this like big bowl of gravy. <laughs> I apologize to anyone in England. I think you meant to pour it into the middle, aren't you? Oh, well f Yorkshire pudding Yorkshire. was first reported in 1737 as dripping pudding in the delightful book The Whole Duty of a Woman. Ugh. But it was Hannah Glass in the art of cookery that was the first to officially call it a Yorkshire, Yorkshire. pudding. I recommend googling that book and looking up the recipe for how to avoid the plague. Yum. Today in history we had this guy who invented fizzy drink discover something less important. And something super cool and super dead was discovered in a book. But first, let's take a moment to congratulate Harriet Quimby, the first licensed female pilot in the US. She took her pilot test today back in 1911 after pioneers such as Aida de Acosta, the first woman to pilot a motorized aircraft, and Raymond de la Roche, the first female licensed pilot in the world, led the way for her to do so. And the super stylish babe got her wings. Quimby was super productive in her life. She wrote seven screenplays for short films, became the new spokesperson for a grape soda, Vin Fizz, which I don't think you can get anymore, but I love grape soda. And while doing all this, she kept a job as a photojournalist. In 1912, she was the first woman to pilot an aircraft over the English Channel, but she did it the day after the Titanic sunk. Yeah, so hardly anyone noticed. And then she had a fatal accident at a thousand feet during an aviation event and died one month before her pilot license anniversary. After her death, an article she wrote for Good Housekeeping about the pursuit of aviation for women came out. So she had the last word on her experience. She knew she was leading the way and firmly believed that there was no reason why the airplane should not open up a fruitful occupation for women. So here's a tall glass of grape soda to Harry Quimby. While we're enjoying this soda pop, uh, let's thank Joseph Priestley for impregnating water with fixed air back in 1767 by holding a bowl of water over a beer vat containing the fixed air, carbon dioxide, at a brewery. So should we actually be thanking beer? Beer. Aww. Beer. No. <laughs> The father of modern chemistry was born in Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Mm, that's champion. And then less importantly, on this day in 1774, he went on to confirm the previous findings of German Swedish chemist Carl Wilhelm Scheele, AKA Hardluck Scheele, and the French chemist Antoine Lavoisier by discovering defoligisticated air. But Google that because I find it really boring and I can't pronounce it. Lavoisier was the one to name it what we all know it as today, oxygen. But what do I mean? Like, <gasps> I discovered oxygen too, no. <laughs> no, I mean O2 itself, unaltered. I'll put a link below for more info on how he did this. He was a decent dude too, Priestley, yeah. He advocated for intellectual freedom and equal rights for religious dissenters, and he promoted the education of middle-class women, which was unusual at the time. <sighs> A lot of people who have gone on to discover other things credit Priestley's work as their backbone, and he let Schweppes, you know that guy, Schweppes, take his findings and make sweet, sugary goodness out of it. He believed the scientist promoted the security and happiness of mankind. It's a soda again, bringing it back. Mm. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of Snacks and Facts. This week we are putting up a video every day to celebrate, and then you can expect a video every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. I hope all in Yorkshire, Yorkshire have a very happy Yorkshire day. And I'd like to wish the incomparable Mina Kumari a happy birthday today. The popular actress known as the tragedy queen of Indian cinema would have been 85 today if her life was not cut tragically short. Kamari intimidated her male leads and made many forget their lines when they acted alongside her. She acted in a hundred films and in 1961 was the only woman nominated multiple times in the best actress category at the Film Fair Awards. You can find links to her films below. And lastly, in 1984, the Lindo Man, AKA Pete Marsh, her, archaeology jokes, was discovered in a peat bog in England and was very well preserved after having been dead for almost 2,000 years. He may have been ritualistically sacrificed by being strangled, hit on the head, and having his throat cut. So how was your day? Yorkshire! <laughs>